Breaking tonight, a new bombshell in the criminal case that touched off riots in cities across this country. As one newspaper publishes what it claims are the details of the autopsy report in the death of Freddie Gray in Baltimore. Revealing that the medical examiner concluded this death was a medical and legal accident and only ruled it a homicide because she was told the police failed to belt Freddie Gray into that police van. Welcome to The Kelly File, I'm Megan Kelly. Just hours ago, the Baltimore Sun published what it is calling the first details from Freddie Gray's autopsy report. Key findings include the conclusion that Gray suffered a significant high impact injury inside the police van. But the report is riddled with suppositions and guesses. And there are real questions about whether this can serve as the basis for a murder charge. In addition, and this is significant, there are now angry press releases from both the state's attorney's office and the defense attorneys over who leaked these details to the Sun and why. Tonight we have some of the smartest folks on this case for our lead. Dr. Michael Bodden, who has testified in dozens of high-profile criminal cases, criminal defense attorney and Fox News legal analyst Arthur Idala, and former prosecutor Mark Iglarsh. Thank you all for being here. Dr. Bodden, let me start with you. The Sun does not publish the autopsy report. They say that they have spoken with sources who have seen the report and have the information. The only people who we know have it are the state's attorney and the medical examiner. The state's attorney is denying it was their office. So they're suggesting perhaps, I guess, the medical examiner's office spoke with somebody. Why are there so many suppositions in it? You tell me whether this is normal because I went through it and I just want to show the audience, okay? The medical examiner surmised that he, meaning Freddie Gray, may have gotten to his feet. Then she goes on, it's possible Gray was hurt while lying on the floor. His body likely couldn't have moved into that position. Gray's most significant injury most likely occurred after the second and before the fourth stops, possibly though before the third. The medical examiner surmised that Gray could have gotten to his feet and on and on she goes. Is this unusual? Yes, it's unusual because the uh, medical examiner is concerned about the autopsy findings. What did the spine bones look like in the neck? What did the uh, spinal cord look like? But more important than that, the autopsy has to be fully released so that we're not looking at somebody's spin on it. But also, it, it doesn't stand by itself. Uh, uh, Freddie Gray was in the hospital for seven days. They did a lot of work on him at the hospital. Mm -hmm. They evaluated him, they did tests on him on the day he came in. Seven days later when, when he deceased, when he's dead, an autopsy, things have changed a bit. Maybe he was operated on, we don't know about it, depending on the injury. Uh, they have all kinds of neurological tests to see what damage was done at the time he came into the hospital. That's a good point. Which, the autopsy, you know, in, the, in these murder cases is typically all you have. Here they had a live patient in the hospital for days and right, that is not tested. mentioned anywhere. But Mark, I ask That's you, right. I ask you, we, we now have the medical examiner reportedly saying this was an accident. And the reason we get to homicide is because, well, the cops didn't belt the guy in. But then we have a report that goes on and on about, well, this may have happened, or it may have happened a different, different way. And it could have been this way, but it could have been this other way. How do you build a murder case off of that? Well, I'll tell you how I build reasonable doubt. Every single time on the defense side, I read maybe, probably, most likely, I'm thinking reasonable doubt, reasonable doubt, reasonable doubt, because the state <clears throat> must remove every reasonable hypothesis of innocence. So you can assume that it's possible then that he could have been injured so severely before he got into the van, causing partial, partial um, uh, situation where he cannot breathe, a partial paralysis it was, and also in the van. Maybe this happened, possibly this happened. Again, all you have to do is create reasonable doubt and you don't get that charge. I don't, Arthur, I don't understand how they can get, I mean, I get the theory is that the cops, they're guilty because they didn't belt him in. So whatever happened in that van, it's on them. But they're gonna, who knows what they're gonna argue. The original report was that the second prisoner who went into that van heard Freddie Gray jumping around and it sounded like he was trying to hurt himself. What is the defense gonna do with that kind of an argument when they've got a, a, a medical examiner who has to tell the truth, which is, I really have no idea what happened. Right, well, and also let's just break down the, the charges a little bit. One, ch the driver is charged with depraved heart murder, which is the highest count, it's second degree murder. 
Megan, I, I submit that even if you, if you believe everything that the medical examiner puts in here, it still doesn't go to depraved heart because what she's saying is that it's the omission to act. Depraved heart in law school is like, it's New Year's Eve, there's millions of people in Times Square and you do something, you fire, you're gonna test your, your gun and fire it in the middle of the crowd even though you don't wanna kill anyone. That's acting with a depraved heart. Unless. Here, they're saying it's an, uh, it's an accident, but because, they, because aid wasn't rendered and there was an omission of aid, that's a depraved heart. Meanwhile, we don't even know, Megan, if the driver knew the state of a prisoner behind him. Ostensibly, and, there's a, a shield behind the driver. They don't even know when the injury took Occur. place. They're, they're saying right. it may, it most likely occurred after the second and before the fourth stops, but it occurred possibly before the third stop. Well, what if it occurred after the fifth stop, when nobody had seen it, I mean, like, they, I don't see how the prosecution has a beyond a reasonable doubt murder case <laughs> here, they don't. Mark. Megan, <laughs> Megan, they don't. Let me, let, me, let me just add to what Arthur's saying. If they can prove that the driver slammed on his brakes intentionally, knowing that this guy was in a very, very vulnerable position, we all agree mm -hmm. that he was on his belly, hands behind his back, and that was, that's on them. That is a problem that the officers are going to have to answer for. But unless there's some type of intentional slamming on the brakes to then recklessly disregard yeah. his life, then right. you no, don't get Go ahead, Dr. Brown. I can see Dr. Brown once again. Megan, if I just want to say one thing. What we're doing is reacting to the newspaper spin. We have to see the facts, the autopsy as was written, and all of the hospital records that permits interpretation of the but autopsy. But Dr. Bodden, there's not going to be anything in the autopsy that conclusively says this is when the injury took place. I mean, you know well, that's not going to happen. No, but we, that may be in the, uh, in the uh, hospital record. It, it's interesting How? that there's no reference in that whole newspaper article to what happened seven days in the hospital. Mm -hmm. That's going to be very important to okay. identify. People get injured and have neck injuries and can be partially paralyzed. Uh, they don't have to die right away. Uh, Megan. Was he injured? Was his neck injury when he's helped into the van? The here's hospital the, will tell here's us the, the autopsy. Here's the question for the jurors about the driver of the car. Did he know or should he have known? Was it reasonable for him to know, reasonable for him to believe that him driving and decelerating, that's what the autopsy is saying, in an act of deceleration, his act was likely to cause serious injury or death. Come on, mm -hmm. people ride around without seat belts all the time. Yes, he's vulnerable. Is he gonna cause death? Maybe it could cause an injury. Uh, well, but and they had death? just Megan, implemented this policy Megan. of requiring the seat belts days before this arrest, days before. And, and so far, we're not even sure the prosecution can prove that that policy was communicated to these particular officers. Go ahead, Mark. In light of how prejudiced already the potential jury pool, assuming it stays in that jurisdiction are, they may make the finding that first of all, there were no windows at all in that van. So if Gray got to a standing position, he couldn't see where the van was going. Secondly, the driver at some point, it's reasonably foreseeable to him that he could be decelerating and thus that could somehow place him in even a more dangerous position. Mm -hmm. I can see jurors wanting to slam them with the highest charge, even though legally, I don't think it gets Just there. based on the laws of physics, you know, I mean. That's why you waive a jury and you go with a judge, a, a bench right, trial. There's Biden, no Biden, judge Dr. Biden, what, I mean, what, risky. what the autopsy he seems to be saying, at least the reports of it are, they don't believe that the injury happened outside the van. Yeah, they but believe that's it was not based akin... on the autopsy. Okay, go ahead. That's based on speculations as to what might have happened. It's very unusual to get this kind of injury from that kind of a, uh, a, a deceleration, uh, period. Now, maybe it could happen, but there are very few cases like this where somebody gets a fatal cervical spine injury from deceleration mm -hmm. in the back of a van. Um, and well, what do you make death? of the fact, Dr. That's Biden, that in the, report, in the report, they're talking about the fact that Freddie Gray was supposedly on his knees. He was on his knees after the alleged injury. He was on his knees, slumped over on a bench. Could that be possible with a, with a spine injury? Yes, of course it could be. We have all kinds of people who have spine injuries who are in wheelchairs, who do things, who can, who can move their arms, can move their legs partially. It depends on what the actual spinal cord showed at the time of autopsy. Right, and more important, how, what it showed when it was examined during while he was alive on the first day that he comes in. I got to go. 